All right, welcome everyone. This is Basic Reporting, News That Finds You, Chapter 7. So this is the basics of reporting. There's some uh, tips of what to do when you get out there, sources, some general practices you should uh, maintain while going out in the field. Uh, I've done lots of stuff like this before. So uh, let's, uh, let's uh, get started because these are important things you have to understand when you are out there. Some of them are sound pretty basic and some of them are stuff you're just gonna have to deal with and it's not the better side of uh, of the industry. So, but this is what we uh, wanna get into. So let's take a ride in the basic reporting world. All right, okay. All right, things we're gonna learn today, you're gonna define various events you can uh, be covering in your field, in the field. Uh, especially when you first get in. I think they took a good uh, approach by kind of uh, telling you when you're a rookie reporter because uh, when you first get, get in, you'll be a rookie reporter and you will not possibly uh, be ready for what you're about to uh, to to encounter. It's going to be a lot of uh, rushing here, rushing there. It's not where you are there at that point. It's where you have to be next. Get used to it. Uh, quick turnarounds. Going from one story to another, constantly getting phone calls. Oh, forget this story. You're going to the is other thing. Um, yeah, you'll have a plan, and some days those plans uh, of what stories you'll be covering um, will be go as follows. But there's going to be lots of days that you're going to have a plan, and it gets thrown right out because something else popped up that they need you to cover. That's the industry you're getting into. This is your job. Um, and especially when you first get started, you're, they're going to test you and see how much you can take. They're going, it's part of it. Um, they want to see uh, how much um, you can handle because they realize that this industry is not for everyone. Um, and you're not going to be getting paid a whole lot. You're going to get uh, thrown around around a lot. You'll probably be take, getting a lot of weird shifts back to back and they do that on purpose because they know that things like this pop up all the time and they they're a little bit harder on you at the beginning because they want to see what you're made of and that's just the way it is and no matter where you go especially when you first start that's what we all deal with i'm gonna be honest with you straight to the point because it doesn't do you any good if i sugarcoat it for you all right this is the way it is out there um, is it, do I get to do some, see some really interesting things and I get to meet lots of interesting people and see things, be part of things that not everybody gets to be part of? Um, yeah, but then there's the downside to it as well. Um, it's kind of a crazy life and it's, it can be, it can, it can wear on you. Um, but you have to be able to, uh, make sure you, this is what you're for, what you want to do. All right. All right, so define various events you could cover. Um, explain how to analyze event for news. Um, do research and find human sources. So how are you going to find sources? You need to find how you're going to find re, uh, information. Lots of times you got to do research and know how to report non-event-based stories. All right, let's uh, kind of go and take a look. All right, something you should know about journalism in a nutshell as it says. Some stories you're going to find. Some stories find you, um, especially when you first get started. Like in this chapter says, uh, this chapter concerns the latter. Uh, especially when you first get started, they're gonna assign you to lots and lots of stories, and you'll don't worry. It's not just the rookies, um, but as you get along, and later on, you'll get you'll have stories and days where stuff is assigned. Uh, but as you get a, go along in your career, um, they're gonna expect you to find stories on your own. Yes, they'll always have stories for you, but the good, a good uh, trait of a report is being able to find a story without you know, the, the place that you're working. Um, sometimes it just, the, the story happens and you gotta go on it, and sometimes they wanna see what you can find. You know, it could be a story from a story that you went into, um, and you wanted to follow up on that and see where that, le that leads to. And what kind of story? Sometimes it leads to something uh, of substance. Sometimes it doesn't. They'll be dealing with a lot of that. But we're going to deal more with uh, with some stories finding you because when you first get started, 
That's the way it's going to be. Okay, you're going to go here, you're going to go here, you're going to go here. Cover this story, this story, this story. Um, all right, and that's probably a good because it's 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 easier for uh, them because they uh, they know you're new and they need to see what you can do when they give you stuff. All right, before you go with every any story, um, lots of times you're going to get stories that you don't know much about, especially when you first get started. As you as you get along in this industry and in with this career, um, you're going to continue to go to a lot of the same stories, continue to see a lot of the same people. You'll be establishing relationships and contacts, and that's a big part of being a good journalist. Because if, you, if you're a good journalist and you are good with your sources and you quote them well, right and you work with them in a up upfront and honest manner and you're known as a top-notch solid journalist they're happy to see someone like you uh, uh, and because they know they can uh, trust uh, what you're gonna write you can they, they at least be fair you're not gonna necessarily be there you know they, uh, in, in some bad way but they know they're gonna be a fair journalist and you, you you don't take things out of context you do your due diligence and uh, you you uh, do what you're supposed to do and you're gonna create a good reputation for yourself um, part of this is you're gonna have to research a lot of things that you're uh, going into sometimes you don't have time to do that it's a wonderful time that we live in because now we have all this wonderful technology just imagine uh, 20 30 40 years ago being a reporter and not having that little wonderful computer in your phone everywhere you go or a laptop with Wi-Fi and um, all these wonderful sources um, it's it's a lot easier in that in that way of getting information and getting it quickly as opposed to the past um, but some places you can go, previous stories, lots of times you go on a story uh, or you have an event or something like that. Or, you know, this there's been story, this is an ongoing story and you're covering it for the first time. Uh, it's important to go check out previously published stories either from your, um, from your, your workplace, wherever that may be. Uh, especially if you know the people who uh, wrote it, maybe they could, maybe they weren't available um, to cover that day, or they're on vacation, or something like that. Um, you can talk to them, or they they can, uh, or you, you, someone can tell you who wrote those stories before, so you get some sort of base of knowledge, uh, so you don't ask questions that have already been asked, and um, you have some sort of knowledge of what you're talking about. Um, also, uh, source documents. Source documents. You're going to ask, uh, well, what is that? Um, lots of times, um, if you're going to meetings, um, there'll be uh, agendas and meeting minutes uh, of what went on. And that's usually in more legislative kind of things or committee kind of things. Just to let you know, if you're going to be a reporter, you're going to be going to lots of stuff like that especially when you first get started. They're usually not the hardest uh, things to do. Um, but a lot of times they'll have agendas and it can give you an idea uh, what is going to go on in that meeting. Uh, are there certain uh, certain topics that you really want to focus on? Maybe there's uh, a new law that get, gets passed that uh, affects a lot of people in a, in a city or something. Maybe taxes could go up or something like that. So that's that's a story, or it could be any number of things um, that would be interesting to the people. Because remember, we're being audience centric with our uh, with our coverage. Um, so there's lots of different things that you could uh, uh, be uh, talking about um, and and finding things out about. Um, so you have to uh, be able to uh, check out some stuff. Uh, also, official websites. Um, they depends on where you go. Uh, it could be a business, it could be a political figure, it could be anything uh, like that. It could be a school, whatever. Um, lots of times they'll have a lot of official uh, information. They'll have places like minutes and agendas and um, maybe biographies of certain people. Maybe you're going to interview 
a professor in doing this uh, because of something, say, uh, a scientific anomaly or something like that, and they have happen to have an authority there. You can get a little bit of information um, from the official uh, website, from that university, biography, stuff like that. Um, so you have some basic knowledge. Don't go in cold, all right? Never really go in cold. Sometimes it, it's tough. I know when I was by myself, lots of times I'd go in in the morning and a weekend, <coughs> excuse me, and um, I, I would get a list of places to go and I'd have a briefing. They'd give me some papers uh, of some stuff to give me some background of an event or who to talk to, maybe a little bit of information, maybe a couple of links to, to look on through my, on the phone that, that we had. Um, so we had some sort of base of knowledge. Uh, so, but if you, um, and that was when I was by myself as a photographer. Um, so that at least they gave me something. But I mean, if you've got your reporter and got some time um, to go to uh, before you got to get to these places, you don't have a huge amount to do in a given day. Um, check up on that stuff. Um, official websites, documents like that. They're all very very. Uh, helpful and when you're getting these stories it's it's there's nothing worse than going in cold and not knowing who anybody is or under not understanding anything because you, you have to to be able to tell a story you have to have that some sort of base knowledge you also have to have some sort of knowledge when you're ha going into a into an interview because you, if you don't know anything they're going to know and they're not going to take you seriously you're not going to have the best um, rapport with the people that you're talking to uh, from a you know for, for because they're gonna know you don't you haven't done your homework they're gonna be able to tell um, and so you know it's important um, to do that uh, to do the research on um, whatever it is you're doing at least give get a little bit of knowledge it helps uh, it helps you know what they're talking about at wherever you're going it helps you with interviews and then it helps you uh, create the story that you're creating. All right, so seek sources and plan interviews. All right, so yeah, you'll uh, your research is going to point to good surface uh, sources coming to the event. Um, so when you're doing your research, you're going to find more and more as you go along. More, more and more information will pop up. You got to be able to know how to process that pretty quickly, and because you're not going to have all that much time usually to get where you're going to go, uh, be able to make some quick notes down and figure out what's useful at that point in time um, uh, and and and, you, and through going through this over and these kinds of things over and over and over again you have a certain workflow of what you do and some of these things are repetitive you get used to what they do there's there's a certain way certain things go and that you find a way to Make it work. You'll you at first you may spend too much time at a place, um, and you might have to place else to go. And as you get better with storytelling, better knowing how much you need for your whatever you're writing, whatever article, whatever thing you might be producing, um, you you learn to figure out how much you need um, to create whatever it is you're creating from. Uh, journalism standpoint be it an article or an on-air television thing or even a radio audio uh, package whatever it is you're uh, doing um, he, and it comes with time at first you're gonna spend a little too much time um, because oh I never have enough and I I kind of like when I go on a shoot I probably shoot too much uh, in general I definitely did when I started uh, shooting and then I would not shoot as much uh, as because I knew how much I had to get for a given story depending on how long I knew it was going to have to be. Um, it'll come, it'll come, but just know you, you the, the, the things that you spend too much time doing at the beginning, it's something we all do and you'll get used to it and you'll figure it out. Um, something else, if um, you're going to uh, an event and um, a press conference or whatever the thing is, See if you can find some way to contact them or a representative of this person um, to see if you can talk to them either beforehand or maybe just after whatever the main event is. It could be a meeting, could be a press conference, whatever the case may be, whatever the thing is. See if you can get a hold of them because uh, 
sometimes, um, and that goes up to the end too, uh, try to set up some interviews. Um, um, because one, you want to tell them, oh, we're coming. And so um, you, uh, that person or the organizer or whoever say, yeah, we're, we're, we're coming. We want to um, get the best story possible. And you'd be surprised how, how much they cater to you when you're out on these stories. They want to make sure they get the best story out there. And uh, so they'll, they're usually very cooperative. I mean, it depends on the nature of the story, um, but uh, you'd just be surprised how much uh, more receptive they are to when they know when they know you're coming. Um, as, uh, the assignment desk, yeah, because I was from TV News, they'd uh, they'd assign us to that, and the, someone at the assignment desk said, "Yeah, someone's going to be there, um, so we'll figure it out." They gave them an approximate time when we would be there, um, depending on what the event was. Sometimes the event was time sensitive. And of course, I had to be there by a certain time, um, and that was fine. But they, and uh, yeah, just look for this. Uh, look for our person. Um, and say, yeah, Cliff's coming yeah, from we're from Fox 43, um, and they would tell me where to go, and that was a huge help. That's, that's a, yeah, another aspect when you you're not really sure. Lots of times, I didn't know I was going to be given in a given day in the morning, and they tell me what where I'm supposed to go. I have a plan for me. Um, my papers and all that kind of thing, and they, and the people at the event knew I was coming, and they told me, oh yeah, just talk to this person. They said just meet them here at this desk or wherever it is, and they were you that usually made things a whole heck of a lot easier in getting uh, in getting interviews. It made things a lot easier in coverage, and I also I might not have been able to get a good position for certain shots in some cases if I didn't talk to them, and sometimes they'll have us hook you up with someone who can get you some access to places you, uh, you might not get um, regularly. So and that, it's really beneficial to do that. And then also beforehand, try to set up the interviews. It's going to be beforehand or afterwards. Yeah, and even if you're at like a, a press conference or something like that, there might be some other issue that they're not talking about at that press conference or talking about at that meeting um, that you're working on a totally – different story or a story that might be related you want a different angle or you, there's an exclusive story that you don't want other people to or other outlets in the area to know about because it's your story um, and you want to talk to them and a lot of times these people will, you know it's they'll, they'll be fine yeah sure I'll talk it will talk to you beforehand talk to you afterwards happens quite a bit I, I saw lots of times when I did lots of times when I was in the industry I saw it lots of times uh, for the little bit of time I was at the city of Harrisburg the the, the mayor would have uh, numerous press conferences about different events um, but then afterwards uh, when that event was over and he usually promote, promoted some certain aspect or event or or policy or whatever the case was, uh, whatever the, th the press conference was, um, they, uh, afterwards they would uh, say, hey, Mr. Merrick, would you uh, please talk to, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about this other topic that had nothing to do with the press conference. But it was still an important uh, aspect, and yeah, and the mayor was usually very yeah, sure, I'll do whatever you need. Um, and, and it all depends on what their schedule is like, or maybe they have to figure out some time later on. And but that that's important. It's important to uh, to take those steps beforehand. It's going in cold and not like making the calls that you need to make and do these things. I know it sounds like oh yeah, well, of course you, know, like, you got to. It's something. These are things you have to get used to doing um, and this becomes part of your routine this is what makes the good stories little things like this need to be done because this is what you call train story and plus you're, you're you're creating your contact they're getting familiar with you then they'll be more open with you when you first start working with people and um, they're not going to know who you are and they're going to be a little uncomfortable you're going to be a little uncomfortable um, that goes with it and it makes sense um, but as they go along and you do the good job a good journalist does, um, people will be much more easy. It will be much easier to work with people because they know they could uh, trust that you're going to do a good job and uh, put out the put out um, good information and uh, uh, for, for, for what uh, um, needs to get done. Also, uh, check your spelling, all right? 
I know we've, I've seen some things already in some of the writing, and you may not think, oh, well, I'm not good at spelling. You have, if you're going to be a writer, this is, this is, this is imperative. Um, plus, we have spell check. Plus, there's other things to check things out. Um, if you're going to be a professional writer, you should have, know how to do basic spelling. Um, and yes, it does hurt your credibility as as a uh, as a reporter because I mean it shows you you're not showing attention to detail. And being a journalist is all about attention to detail. If you can't spell uh, regular words right or even names right, that's why it's so important to, uh, especially when you're going to be interviewing people, regular men, uh, person on the street interviews. Wait, the first question you ask, and, and I'm always going to repeat this, and you're going to hear this interviewing again. First person, the first question you ask is, could you please state and spell your first and last name? And I, it, the, the generic thing is give me your title, but not everybody has a title, so you just try to kind of find out, you try to figure out what, because I'm always thinking from a television um, standpoint, what's the lower third going to be? But you still can use that in a print sense, too, because you want to know who that person is. They, they could be a homeowner, um, a, a, pay, a, pay, a patron, a concerned citizen, whatever, or know where they're from, but you really should know how to spell their names. You may ask, well, why? Um, how about John Smith? Okay? J and the person spells their name J-O-N-S-M-Y-T-H, and you spelled it in the typical way you would think they'd spell J O H N S M I T H. You got it wrong. You blew it. Um, things like that can happen. Um, try not to do that. Ask that question of, uh, of, of, of the important, quote unquote, important people, especially for events and um, like that. Um, this stuff you can check out. Um, and stuff like that, you can get information about all that. That's more for a um, person on the street kind of thing and even sometimes it depends on what the event is um and who who what you're talking about so play it by ear see what the event is see who the people are see if there's uh things uh to give you some information on them once again play it by ear uh reviewing proper nouns is also also very very important aspect um you gotta make sure uh um, you are you are using uh, proper nouns and making sure they're spelled because there's different nouns and different spellings for different nouns making sure because oh well, technically it's spelled right but make sure in the context of what you're using some words are similar um, but it won't pop up on your spell check um, pay attention to that um, make sure they have to be uh, spelled right uh, so you, you know you don't want the uh, won't, don't want to get that wrong either um, so um, yeah because you know, well, you don't want you don't want I just said you don't want to get the name wrong so um, and this and also uh, look into the numbers um, yes I always say I am math was never my friend I know the basic math all those other maths uh, I never was never any good at and people said oh you'll never get anywhere I never used any of that but there is certain basic math uh, like when you're looking and when when certain information is given to you and and they have a um, they have an example in here in, in the book and they say uh, uh, it's a sports thing um, running back Chester Charles rushed for 178 yards in the game gaining exactly 84 yards in each half now that's 178 yards for the game 84 for each half that's not right possible because 84 times 2 is 168. Yes, it's a simple thing and simple math, but sometimes uh, things are mis, uh, miswritten, not thought of. Um, the one thing that can be, and, and then with ages and stuff like that, someone dies, um, and yeah, they might have reached that certain, maybe somebody was supposed to, somebody died at the age of, of, of or actually that seemed like they, maybe they were born in 1940 and they died uh, this year, but their birthday was in December of 1940. And if they died right around now, they were just 79. Um, pay attention to that. Um, and these things, these things get 
lost in the shuffle and then there's percentages that you have to think about you have to know basic percentages especially with a lot of information that's out there and a lot of thin numbers that get thrown out for a lot of these meetings you go into um, yeah, knowing basic percentages and understanding how that works um, because it, it all sounds good when it's written down but you have to make sure it, it, uh, it, it does reflect uh, reality all right, here's a few different things that you're going to be uh, covering, especially when you first get started. Um, event coverage, you'll be going to a lot of different speeches and meetings and lots of different uh, news conferences during your time. Get used to it. They're always doing stuff like this. Uh, this is a uh, good bit of coverage in news, especially when you first get started. Why? Because they're these things are usually a little bit easier to cover. It's a little easier to put a store together, uh, and they want you to make make sure that uh, you know how to put a story together. So you'll usually get to go to a lot of speeches, a lot of events, such as uh, um, meetings and, and news conferences. I can't tell me how many of those I've been to through all three of them. Um, get used to uh, things like uh, what's called BOPSA. B O P S A. It's a little uh, acronym. A uh, bunch of people sitting or standing around. Uh, that comes from a television standpoint because when you're trying to get good footage of these meetings, it's basically the same things. Uh, There's only so much you can do with a bunch of people stand, sitting or standing. You're trying to get a lot of different shots, but it's basically the same thing. You can only get so creative. Plus, you've got a meeting there and. Um, they you could be getting in people's way, and that's another aspect of it. So, uh, but get used to it. Um, that's all part of it. Um, basically, um, if you've got a speech, remember a speech is uh, there's a special person who uh, of some interest. They're coming to talk about something very specific. It could be a political candidate. It could be uh, a, a, um, a person of like uh, from an educational background, whatever. Um, remember, they're coming in with a speech, and there's not going to be any real pushback uh, at times in those kinds of things. It's usually a friendly crowd for the most part. Um, it can pop up that things happen at speeches, and then you have to be able to uh, roll with the punches and and um, acclimate to that. Um, but you know, for the most part, you're not going to get, and there's usually not any interaction. With that, it's not a press conference. Um, they get to say what they need to say, and uh, people, yay, they applaud. And it, there's a program to it, and it's very, it's very, very well produced for a speech. And then uh, you always try to get either before or after. You want to get an interview one on one with them. Um, it's, it's, it's really, uh, yeah, you're going to use some of the stuff they say in the speech. But maybe you want to try to get deeper information. You want to go a little deeper in with your story. There's other aspects to that story. Maybe there's some other thing that um, you want to talk to them about. Um, and you're only going to get the information and this quotes by having that interview with them either before or after. Um, so that's that's really important to to, rem to remember. Yeah, you're going to get a lot from the speech, but if you just just take from the speech. It's not going to be enough. You need to get into uh, some sort of an interview with them one-on-one -on -one so they can answer your questions directly. And then also don't forget there are people there. Um, yeah, it's important to get the speech, per the person giving the speech, get their interview. But you also have to get people um, that were there, person on the street um, in interviews and see what their reactions are. That's, that's, that's an imperative part of, a, uh, of any of this. It's having more, um, uh, more input, more quotes, more uh, opinions, more reactions from a few more people to react to what they're saying. You don't want just that person talking. You want to kind of get a feel of the room of whatever the thing is. It, it, it's always different. It's, it depends on the speaker. It depends on the topic. Uh, you know, and you got to, like I said, you got to take it uh, a as it comes. You got to play it by ear. Um, but you should, those are things you absolutely have to do when you're going to a speech. Don't just depend on the speech itself. Get an interview with the speaker, whoever is talking, 
so you can get with um, lots of other questions and then talk with people in that room. Um, my my thing it would be if uh, just know if you have an interview with him or her afterwards, uh, depending on who you're talking to, I would have the speech. I would interview more people before the speech, um, regular people, and then maybe because chances are those other people are probably going to be gone pretty quickly, especially and if you've got a uh, a speech with that person afterwards, you're really not going to find anybody um, there. Very, very few people afterwards. So because people just clear out very quickly. Just a little tip for, uh, from my from my experience. Um, also, meetings. These usually, uh, and a lot of times when I talk about meetings, they're usually usually uh, legislative type of meetings or committee kind of meetings. Um, and they always have that, and they might not necessarily be a legislation or city council meeting. There's lots of um, city or county or um, com some sort of community meetings for any number of, uh, of public interest things going on. But one thing they do always have is an agenda. Um, sometimes the agenda is put out a few days in advance. Sometimes it's put out 24 hours Figure out the rules of what that is. Understand that everything is always different, um, and um, because lots sometimes the meetings aren't very eventful. They're not very exciting, um, but sometimes there's events and topics that come up, um, and that are very interesting to the area and lots of people. And um, taxes could go up, or there's a new law, or heck, I've, I saw a big to do about stop signs. Uh, they were cutting them out of uh, stop signs and in on a, one street in Harrisburg. And a lot of people came out to say, yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, because they were cutting like the stop signs in half instead of every block having a stop sign. Um, they wanted to cut it in half for, better, for more traffic and lots of people didn't want that. So, I mean, this, you know, and the, these kinds of events and these kinds of uh, things um, bring out a lot of people. Um, um, also, uh, so you want to make sure you have your agenda and you understand what the agenda is, what's on there, what's going on. Um, also, you want to get information on the main items in there. Uh, you, so you have to really listen very well. Have elect some sort of electronic recording device because there's only so much you can get with um, with your own hearing and kind of uh, with writing stuff down, which you will still do. Um, but it's and but if you're a recording device of some sort, you can see at what time somebody said something. As you're writing it down, you can write a time of when a certain quote came up that you really liked. Uh, uh, so that's absolutely imperative. Be it either an audio recording or and or a video recording, depending on what you're doing. Um, so it's you're gonna get as much information as you can from that. Um, from that meeting and then once again that goes back to the whole interview aspect see if you can talk to someone before or afterwards about it and then this this the same rules apply too with um, getting people's uh, um, public opinion as well so you might talk to the people who are in charge of the meeting but also the same rules apply because you're trying to get as much information opinions from the people who are in charge of these meetings and then the public reaction because it's people who are, are are affected by these actions in these meetings. And then good, good, get good quotes, and you'll know a good quote. Part of the getting a good quote is um, being prepared, all that stuff that you're doing before, the research and stuff like that, and listening to what is said. And as you're listening to what is said, it, by na naturally, questions will start forming in your head. Um, as you're talking to people in an interviews, um, yeah, you're going to have your standard questions that may have not been asked or topics that might not have been brought up in there. Uh, those, those are questions that uh, you have to make, uh, make up. Um, and it, you have to think pretty quickly uh, on the fly when you're doing this. Um, so how do you get quote, good quotes? You know, a lot of times getting a good quote is simply knowing how to form a good question. Um, eh, lots of times, this old standards I always use, 
um, depending on what I'm kind of getting. Because when I'm interviewing, I either have my informa my informational questions that I need, or there's questions I want to see if I can get a, a good quote out of someone. Um, and 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 that that comes with time, and uh, it depends on this. Once again, it depends on the situation. I can't give you a cookie cutter thing. Um, it's and and you'll see it. And the only way you, you'll see it when you're out there, when you're doing this. Um, it's so how do you get a good quote? It, getting a good quote is how you form that question. Um, you know, it's 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 and how you form the question and how good a speaker the person you're talking to is. All right. Um, yeah, if you're dealing with adults, usually it's it's fine. Um, I love kids. Just to let you know, kids are terrible for informate for uh, getting good quotes. Uh, usually, talking I'm talking like less than eighteen. Um, and it's because it's just the way it, their brains aren't their brains aren't developed enough. I'm not being biased in this. It's just it's just the way it is. It's like yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it was good. That's why think about how many news stories you watch on television. And the, the only time the kids, the kids usually say, don't say too much. Or if they have a bite in there, it's it's a setup with their narration before it. And what does little Jimmy think of this? This is awesome! It happens all the time because they can never really put enough for what you want for a good quote. Um, but that's kids. Um, adults don't have, have, doesn't happen as often as much, especially when it's people who are in charge of these meetings. Sometimes you might find it a little more difficult when you're talking to the person on the street. Um, that um, to, to get those that can be that can be frustrating sometimes. And uh, but it's you'll start to get an eye in the ear and take a look at certain people, see how they react, and um, pick up what they're listening, how they talk, and stuff. Uh, you'll be surprised, and that's why it's so important to be so observational. You have to be like be able to watch a whole lot and listen a whole lot and and see what's going on in a short period of time when you're doing these things you can't ignore things this is another reason i say uh, pay attention that's why i ask those stupid questions those stupid bonus questions i don't care if you know stupid garbage about me are you paying attention paying attention to little things paying attention to this i always said it, it makes you better it makes you better with this and it makes you better in, in general in person uh, to, so you know what's going on around you uh, gathering quotes. Um, so there are going to be some times when you get into a meeting of some sort and you don't know who anybody is. You have four people there, and I, I saw in the in the book what they said uh, what they said to do, and uh, they put a table sketch there. And it's on page uh, one twenty five, and they hey yo know, we got red shirt, you got beard guy, you got uh, ponytail and blue tie. And these were four people that didn't know who. You better know their uh, their uh, names before you leave there, especially if you have interviews with some of these people. Um, but when you don't know, and say you're just coming up into it, and you don't know what, who uh, who who is who, which will happen a lot. I didn't even realize. I, no one told me to do that. Um, that. That made me laugh and chuckle uh, when they when I looked at these helpful hints. It's just something I kind of did naturally. <laughs> hey, there's beard guy, or hey, there's red, there's red, or there's you know, whatever. There's some aspect of it, so you have some sort of uh, some sort of uh, reference to know who's saying what. Um, it's it, it really does does work. Make sure, you, like I said, make sure you get those names, first and last names, and their titles spelled properly. Um, know who everybody is before you you leave there. And like I said, you'll probably talk to at least some of those people if you're doing your job right. Um, so uh, it's a little uh, trick they said to use. I didn't even realize. They actually write, wrote this down. I was surprised. Hey, I do that. So, uh, yeah, it works. It does. Because there's going to be times you have no clue who these people are. All right. So uh, just another little uh, little uh, trick when you're getting interviews and gathering quotes. and Because it happens. All right. News conferences. I've... I've been part of so many news conferences. It's it's crazy, um, both in the professional field and then working with uh, with the city of Harrisburg. Um, so I've become very familiar with uh, with press conferences. Um, they are very organized. Um, just know that 
there is a specific reason for that press conference a lot of the times uh, and uh, there's a certain event or there's a certain uh, policy there or something or some person has either done something good or bad or and they have to have a press conference or a news conference about it. I mean, it could be in nature of it's always a little different. But for them, it's a controlled environment, an event uh, they want and they realize they – they they what they're doing and a lot of times is they're giving the opportunity for the press to come and so we can talk to them sometimes it's sparse uh heavily attended sometimes it's sparsely attended it depends on the story um and, and that just makes sense um and you do have all those sources there it is very organized um and and sometimes um yes they'll have whatever they whatever they're um, talking about they'll have um, their professional uh, statements and what they want to talk about and they'll have specific people who will talk and it's all once again it's all planned um, but and then usually what they'll do is okay is there any uh, questions um, you'd be surprised how many times sometimes yeah there's lots of different questions that are coming from um, different people um, from different media sources that relate uh, to that um, to that to that um, story or whatever the event is, uh, just know that uh, um, that uh, you're gonna, you know, it, uh, what you should do is um, pay attention to what they're doing. Um, and there also might be another aspect or another story um, or an aspect of the story that you've heard about that you don't want everyone to know about, like an exclusive story. Um, and this is an important time to say, oh, can I talk to you afterwards? I have something I want to talk to you about so you can get the exclusive uh, part of that because you may not want other sources to hear about that. That's not, So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, and just know that there are some aspects that are negative. Everyone's basically getting the same story. Um, there's only so many different ways you can do a, a news conference. You're all basically getting the same amount of information. Um, it depends on who that journalist is, who they're covering, what they're covering, what questions they may have asked during the press conference. Um, sometimes you, a lot of you are going to have the same questions. And, oh, well, that question got asked by this person. This question got asked by that person. Um, or the, during the press conference, they put out enough information that they were, these are questions that you would have asked, but they got answered because they already presented to you. Um, that goes part and parcel with what we're doing. Um, also, uh, so a lot of people getting the same story. Um, to make it different, you get, it's, it's, it depends on the angle you take. Is there another angle to take? Sometimes there's not. Sometimes it's just a news conference. There's lots of boring news conferences. How many things? Oh, we're going to have a news conference for the Capona Festival. It's the festival in Harrisburg every year during Labor Day. The very big festival. I covered that. We had a news conference for that. I had videos for that. I covered that. I went and shot stuff for the... And it was all promotional for the... That was my more promotional stuff for the city of Harrisburg, because that's what I was working for at the time. Um, but it's so it's that's not. But people came to it, and they had sponsors there, and they had people outside there, uh, outside of the uh, outside of city hall, doing some stuff that was going to be featured at the festival. Um, so there's only so much you can get with that. Sometimes it's a different topic and there's a lot of questions out there. It could be a hot news story and that's a different, that's a different animal. Um, source dictates where the story goes. That goes on where you, uh, if you have other information, is there another angle to it? That's what I was talking about. Maybe you want to talk to them afterwards. And also it's what well, it can be a snow job. A snow job is, Oh, we have to get out in front of this. Something really bad has happened. We, and how many times you see press conferences with, we are very confident in this person that they didn't do this terrible thing. And then it turns out that they did, but they had to get out in front of it and put on a good face. And it's, it's your job. To, and sometimes it's easy to figure out. Sometimes it's not. Um, and then shortly after you find out that that person might have done all those things. And you're going to get lots of news conferences like that. But and sometimes you still have to go. Why? Because that person who's up in the news is talking about it, and you, you have to be there. Um, and it, it all depends. It all depends on uh, 
the story where the story's at, what's going on, um, and still being fair and still being, uh, you know, be, being balanced out there. Um, but once again, it, it comes with it. I can't, there's so many things I could tell you, but I can't just, you have to go through it. I, I can tell you so much, but until you've been through that, that pacing and what is the craziness every day, um, I, I can only tell you so much. There's some important you have to get through and you're going to be, you're going to be like, holy cow, you know, times that someone after I, you know, try to tell them this stuff and they would believe me, but then they get in there, they graduate and then they go out and it's like, oh my God, oh my goodness, you have your... You were you weren't kidding, yeah. I was like, you were so right about this. I'm like, yeah. I was like, and you know, so they were more prepared, I guess, from being telling them. But it doesn't really, it does. It still hits you, it, you know. It still hits you because it's reality, and you realize, how am I able to do this? How can I do this this quickly? Um, sporting events. Um, that's another aspect you might. Uh, you know, and even if you don't, well, I don't want to necessarily go into sports. Well, you might have to cover sports because that's part of the news. Because you know, news and sports and covering sports and news—it's basically the same thing, or entertainment or whatever. It's all the same thing. You're doing the same exact processes. You're just covering different things. These are different. It's a different venue. It's different people. Um, but it's still an event. You're still getting your quotes. You're still getting your things. So there's a lot of the same. Uh, processes that you do when you're doing your news reporting but there's some things that you have to when you're doing a game story especially you go into game to going to a game and how do i tell a story of that game well there's certain aspects um uh, that that go along with that um, score obviously you want who wins who loses um uh, and there's lots of times i would i would cover uh, for, uh like basketball or football um, and it was, I was just supposed to get some highlights and there's a, especially like you think about Friday night football or our basketball frenzies or whatever. And I'd only be able oh, just get uh, a quarter and then, uh, here, make sure you send, um, get, hook somebody up with a, uh, a contact, uh, number for us to give a final score because they just needed some, some highlights of, 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 of some footage of some good plays and some cutaways because I mean it's remember it's it's a sports cast and though it might be a little bit longer in the grand scheme of things there's a lot of different um, games being focused on and it's not that long um, but they still need that score so you make hey can you make sure you get here's a number can you get that to us and they usually were very very um, very uh, easy to get uh, that information from them. Um, sometimes I was there till the end so I could give them the score but uh, it all depends maybe I had some place else to go. Um, so the score is absolutely imperative. Atmosphere, every every sporting every game is a little different uh, from when you first early in the season. Um, not much has really been gone, going on so far in the season. It's going to have a different feel as opposed to um, a playoff game, um, especially if it's a team that hasn't been in the playoffs a long time. Um, so you're going to feel the buzz of of that stadium. It's going to feel different. Uh, there's going to be an energy in the air, and you're going to be able to feel it. And that's part of when you're writing your stories, the descriptive aspect of it. When we're talking about descriptive, the descriptive opening and descriptive thing, that that's imperative. You have to be able to to write descriptively because you you're, that makes a better story because you're trying to set uh, set the tone for that article and being able to feel that atmosphere. So there's a feeling to it, and you got to be able to write that. Um, Records. Sports is all about you know, lots of different records. The all-time home run record, or or most touchdowns, or most goals in hockey, or most three-pointers in basketball. Whatever the case may be, um, whatever the records are, it's you have to have some sort of knowledge uh, going into that game. Maybe there's some sort of record being uh, broken uh, that day, or is in the or in the or it's imminent. Uh, that someone's going to have to know that history. Um, it can be two teams that are terrible but they have a huge rivalry with each other uh, or they both they're both terrible and then uh, they they if one whoever wins won't be the worst team in the league um for that year um it that yeah, it's knowing the history of uh, of that kind of thing so that gives more depth to that game story um there's so many different aspects statistics Sports is all about stats. You know, where are the records for, from? It's uh, because of these compiled stats of uh, 
oh, they've scored this many points and this many goals or what, whatever the case may be. Or, um, and it's, it, it's who, who's doing better or who it could be even be that someone's so bad or they're going to continue it. If someone's bad enough, they can take, uh, take that in consideration too. Um, injuries. Now, how many teams are, are flying high until their star player gets injured in, right in the middle of the game? And then is it just for that game? Is it for the rest of the season? Is uh, That's a huge – that's that's always the injury, a big injury to a big star. It usually leads off the uh, leads off the coverage, if you think about it, uh, when it comes to uh, comes to the, the report on that uh, on that game. Um, some other tips for event stories. Understand why you're there. All right. Understand what you're there for that story. Um, Keep keep focused on it, um, but you know understand why you are there for that story and try to tell the best story possible. Improvise and adapt. That's why I was a little eh, understand your purpose. But if something pops up and sometimes they do, don't be so tunnel visioned that you can't adapt to that story. All right, still be able to produce a story whether you're there for and. But if something big happens and something, uh, some sort of news comes out of that that's totally different, you have to be able to switch, uh, like uh, turn on a dime, and be able to roll with it. It's you know, it's that's what a good reporter does and a good journalist does. Be able to adapt and be able to you know pay attention and say, hey, oh, I've got a whole other thing. Here's a whole other uh, aspect to it, and it adds another layer to that story. And then look outside of the event. Sometimes um, when you're doing there, improvising and you're adapting, um, you find a better story. You went, you went for, uh, for some meeting, say with some um, legislative meeting, and you thought the big thing was going to be, oh, are they going to pass um, a, ta- a, a, a tax hike of some sort here? And then some other thing that pops up, oh, there's, this, uh, there's an accusation of uh, – of, with some credible uh, evidence of some um, politician might even be somebody on that city council, say it's a city council meeting and that pops up or there's some other piece of it or the, the water is um, in terrible shape or something and whatever. Um, You know, you have to, you know, and you see, Hey, there's, Hey, there's something else here. Um, It it goes back to improvise and adapt. Um, That's part of being a journalist. It's imperative. Um, you have to be able to have lots of layers, being able to be quick, observe, be able to adapt, turn on the dime, um, and, and be able to dig out other stories. Sometimes they are there, sometimes they're not. Uh, but if they're there, you have to be able to uh, work on that other story. Uh, it's And it's, it's demanding. It's not easy. Um, instincts will get better with that. Um, you'll figure things out as you go along. You'll have help along the way. People will be there for mentors for you. Um, don't worry. But you know, this is all. That's all part of it. Um, beyond the standard events, um, there's lots of different things um, that could happen in, in um, these events. Uh, such a, and what we're trying to do is. Uh, is uh, basically uh, from a local standpoint. All news is local, uh, and they see things like uh, they hit a few uh, examples here um, in the book, and it's like uh, an explosion demolishes an oil refinery a thousand miles away from your town. Um, what's okay? That's interesting, but how would that help? How, how would that hurt the people locally? Well, think about it. Oil um, that could bring gas prices up dramatically because you have less oil supply there. Um, there could be some sort of, uh, well, or, you know, uh, it might be some sort of uh, uh, environmental issue. You never know, a thousand miles away, you know, with, you know, with the clouds that come from there, or maybe it infects the, the, the water, or maybe there's some wolf, uh, river going downstream and it comes by you, and uh, you don't know. Um, how does it affect you locally? All the news is local. Um, they say like a uh, Chinese firm has received, uh, received permission to uh, build an engine that was previously constructed only in U.S. cities that could have a good or a bad 
thing, uh, impact on your city um, and your local community because um, maybe it might be taking jobs away. Maybe there was some sort of for, for firm there or company there who was building something. A lot of people um, were employed by it and those jobs are going to go all off all overseas. Or it could be the other way. Um, this could impact you positively and have more jobs or um, whatever they might be creating. They might need new, they might need some other piece of equipment for what they're creating. Um, and your area makes that. And so that's a good news for them. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's looking at the bigger pictures, um, these bigger things that seem distant or you're talking about possible federal government uh, things that happen how does it affect you locally um so that's it's being able to understand that and go into and try and tell a story best as you can all right Be, but besides these events which are very rehearsed and professional and lots of times organized and a lot of, a lot of times fluff sometimes there are going to be times when you're going to be dealing with fires and crimes and terrible, terrible things. Um, I've worked with lots of fires, lots of crimes. Uh, September 11th, TWA 800. Um, uh, that was in July 17th, 1996. Uh, a 747 went uh, crashed off the uh, coast of Long Island on its way to France, and everybody died, and it was a massive... Uh, massive uh, disaster um, so it's uh, you know he's and you're gonna have to be able to go and do your job and report um, you have to stay calm um, it's it's really hard it's difficult sometimes because you're a human being now what I'm about to say is yes um, still be human some people what they do is they become robots they become these uncaring monsters and I shouldn't say monsters because it's a lot of times it's a for a lot of people it's a uh, defense mechanism for them to help them deal with the trauma that they see because a lot of times you're gonna see really bad things you're gonna see dead bodies you're gonna see uh, terribly beat up or just destroyed things or some you're just gonna see things you don't normally get to see when you work in other fields and do other things and work those typical nine to five jobs because you've decided to do this job. And so, yes, sometimes really bad things happen and you're going to see some really bad things um, that most people don't see. Um, you still have to do the job. You still have to be professional. But I do say, I always say, don't stop being human because the best way to tell stories story is keeping your humanity, being able to give the proper respect, the proper emotion to the situation, as opposed to just, okay, I'm just doing this, getting this done, and it doesn't have the same heart. A lot of people who do that don't have the same heart. They're not going to get, um, if they don't seem um, as, as uh, uh, sympathetic in time, sometimes they're not. Um, and then we're not going to get the best story. Um, so you have to stay calm in what you're doing. Yes, it's difficult, but this is your job. This is what we're going to do. Um, also, stay safe. Um, sometimes it could be floods. It could be fires and stuff like that. Certain things are blocked off for your safety. I'm going to go and get the great shots, or I'm going to get this. You can't stop me. I'm the press... Lots of times, especially at a fire, um, in fire scenes, what they'll do is they'll let you through, um, but they always have you off to the side. There's a there's an area where you're allowed to be um, to get what you need. Just don't make sure you don't go too close. Um, crime scenes as well. There's certain areas you can go, certain areas you can't go. Um, just uh, pay attention to those, respect those, because these are the people who can help you get your stories. Don't act like an idiot, all right? I can go here, I climb the press! And no, follow the rules, respect what they want, respect what they need, um, get what you need, and they'll work with you. Um, they'll be very accommodating with you. And a lot, lots of times you can get an interview afterwards, just know that waiting for that interview could take a while, could take a few hours, because they're working on whatever they're doing. 
remember, what they're doing is more important than what you're doing. All right, these are emergency, uh, emergency workers and first responders. What they're doing is more important. They're gonna, they allow you to get what you need to get, but follow the rules. Okay, it's important, and also stay focused. Focus is everything. I always say that. Stay focused. Um, uh, with, with what you're doing in so many different aspects, but being focused, being calm, and being safe. Remember, you got to keep these things in mind when you're out there. Um, certain of elements to these stories, obviously, if how many people died or how many I injuries are going on, how much was lost from a damage standpoint. Sometimes you won't find. Take a few days to figure that out. Maybe they have it right away. Uh, wouldn't count on that. Um, also, know who is involved in the story. Be careful, all right? Don't start revealing, even if you find out certain information of who, who certain people are, Kobe Bryant, uh, what happened there, um, but, and respect those certain things, but when it's okay, uh, um, then release certain things. We're talking about people dying or, or something like that, um. So, uh, but it's important to know who you're talking to, and of course the sources um, who are going to be talking to. Know who they are. Know who might be the people involved. If you can get that information, um, so, um, and usually once again, that's talking to people, making connections, um, and sometimes they might just give you the information. The, the, every situation is different. Just know that. Be you got to be flexible. All right. Just know that every situation is different. And of course, what happened? What happened in that event? These, if you break it down to these things, a lot of times these events, it, 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 and if you notice in a couple of things that we've done, um, a lot of this it was in there. All right, the big three. Be prepared, do your research, all right? Find your story. Um, well, you know, Find the story, where's the story, what, how does it affect, and why do, should the people that are reading my audience care? Okay, how does it affect them? And then, of course, be safe. Don't do not do stupid things. Don't go into dangerous areas. Um, make sure you pay attention. Be attention to detail. Don't have stories in your um, – errors in your story, even spelling, uh, sentence structure, stuff like that. Keep an eye on that. Uh, factual aspects, double-check everything, all right? Double-check it. If you don't double-check, you could be making a huge mistake, and you don't want to do that, all right? All right, that's all I got here for you today. Hopefully that was somewhat uh, helpful. Um, so uh, just know uh, next week I'll have another one for you. Don't forget, you've got a test uh, Friday, no later than Friday, 11.59 p.m. Okay? Please stay safe. If you got a question, email me. Let me know. All right? We're getting there. We are getting there. All right? So keep, our, keep working. Keep our, uh, working at it. It's a tough time. We'll get through this. All right. Bye.